Hello everybody, anybody tuning in, I'm just setting up here, going to make sure I can see the comments. Bear with me one moment please, hope everyone's doing good. Get out from behind the piece. Just trying to uh, set up the comments here so I can communicate with anybody who might be on. And one moment. Okay. Just one second here before we get started, guys. Sorry about this. Oh, hey, hey. Hi, Randy. My brother is watching. I just got that one. Not famous yet. No, not by a long shot. Okay, I'm uh, just going to wait for a few more people to join. Hello. Good morning. It's uh, 11.05 here in sunny Saltaire. Uh, in British Columbia, on the west coast of Canada. Hello. Uh, let me know where you're coming from. I'd love to know who's watching. Uh, States, Canada, the United States. Let me know. Um, in case you missed it, which you can check out later, I was live yesterday just painting this uh, beautiful Art Deco magazine rack in the color Peachy Keen. Uh, so that's this beautiful color right here. It's kind of like Molly Ringwald's nails from Breakfast Club. I absolutely love it, just a bit darker maybe. Um, so I covered it with that, just a couple of coats. It's had all night to dry in the Country Chic Paints uh, formula. I've got the drawer all done here. Um, hi from Nova Scotia, hello. What time is it there? Probably already past noon. Um, okay, so uh, this has had plenty of time to dry. I was going to let you guys know that I want a, uh, a more rustic finish with this. I, I do want to show off all of these really nice lines that you probably can't see in the camera. Um, so it has all night to dry. It's a bit too late to do a wet distress with a damp cloth. So I'm just going to use 180 grit sandpaper to rough up the edges. That's Thomas, my cat. He kind of has free reign except on the wet surfaces and keyboards. He knows he's stuck. Ugh, he's stuck. There you go, buddy. Okay. So I've got the 180 grit paper here. And if Thomas, you'll be so kind. Shimmy, bud. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, all right. This is his house, too. So um, just going to go in with the 180 grit paper. You can use a block or a pad. Um, the sponges work, too. Uh, this works for me. All I want to do is go along the edges and the grooves, anywhere that has nice lines. Um, there's cute scallop edges right on the edge here. I want to highlight those. Um, maybe if we have time, we can put a stencil on it and wax it up so it's nice and soft. So starting at the top. Start off small, just in little areas until you get the hang of it. Um, sometimes it helps to start with the back of the piece. Uh, especially if this is your first time creating uh, just a rustic finish. Um, you can always paint over and do it again. There's a hundred ways to correct it, so don't have to be afraid to distress. Um, one reason I like the wet sanding method better is it is sanding free, um, so a lot less mess, especially if you're working inside the home. But uh, this table gets cleaned up all the time, so I'm not worried. countrysheetpaint.com or .ca if you're in Canada. I get 10% off your order. You don't have to get Peachy Keen. Um, it is a great color, but anything you like. Just a little fun thing. Good for a week. Okay. Oh, and there is a lot of really nice detail. There's some kind of trim. Might not be able to catch it in the camera, but it's really nice. So I'm just going to pass over really lightly to expose some of the lines in there. Oh, 
Love it. It's awesome. So I did um, about two and a half coats, so really thin third coat. So I do have to apply quite a bit of pressure in some areas that are very covered and the paint adhered amazingly. Uh, so just got to do a little elbow work on here. The rule of thumb for distressing is to always work on the outside and then go in. Um, also really good for uh, blending on paint to create depth. is sometimes more comfortable to hold. And naturally, probably more wear at the bottom than the top because that's where it gets beat around over time being moved. clean up most of this though. Don't want to blow it all over the studio. Uh, always have a cloth handy. Okay. Has anybody ever used this color? I'd love to know. Anything similar? We've got uh, Ula La on the color line. That's a bit of a lighter blush pink. It's a really good one to use. Perfect color for spring I find. side here and then we can probably dust it off. So 
So just using the 180 paper here, you can use a pad or a block, whatever's more comfortable for you. This is just a look I'm going for. Uh, you don't have to distress for your own project, but this might help if you're looking to do that. Uh, that comes with using a finer grit paper is you're also smoothing out the paint. It does have a pretty chalky matte texture just on its own, but I find if you just, even if you don't want to distress, use like a 220 grit and just pass it over the surface. It takes away any um, unwanted brush marks, some texture, and it leaves a really nice smooth finish. decals on this side I think maybe or uh, stencils I'm just gonna rough it up one more time Whew, that paint is really on there you can always use a coarser grit um, I don't have one at the moment but if you have something a little more like a 150, I think that would be just as fine to distress. have a piece with lots of detail or um, you just want to clean it up a little faster, uh, a, a vacuum works just as good instead of a cloth. See, and a little distressing just brought out each little leaf. Um, it's very nice. Dust. Okay. And should distress the drawer, make it match. Uh, paper here. Oh, more San Diego. Lots of people in California watching. Hello. That's awesome. Hope you guys are getting some good weather, like New York. It's been non-stop sunshine all, all week. I love it. So 
So uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, start with the outside and then work your way in. It gets a nice old vintage effect. Otherwise you might end up with that spotted cow distress kind of look uh, sometimes when you do it too randomly. So this did have a little metal circlet kind of around it, but I did paint right over that, but I do want to bring up some of it because it is kind of cute. So, oops, about the paint, adhere nicely. So there's that little kind of fun metal circle that went all the way around, adds to the chicness of everything. Absolutely love this color. It's it's not a like a little girl pink. It's very can go in any room, any style of decor. It's very versatile. So now that we've sanded a bit, showed off some of the curves and wear, I do want to go in with uh, this is belt buckle metallic cream. It's a metallic uh, cream <laughs> from Country Chic Paint. It's not a paint in itself. It's rather thick. You can't really pour it out like a paint. This one is our bronze tint. It's one of my most favorite to use other than Lucky Penny, which is a copper. Um, so I like to use like a makeup pouncer, oops, a makeup pouncer, or you can use uh, one of these handy guys, one of our artist brushes. This is just the, uh, the half inch one. Um, gonna go in with the pouncer though. It does make like for a nice finish, nice and smooth. And I've got two stencils today. I think this one I've already done in belt buckle. It's obviously a favorite here. Uh, let's see. I want to put it, you know what? I think I want to do that with a belt buckle and a pouncer. So I'm just going to get some tape and uh, keep that affixed to the surface so I don't slip. Um, don't really want to tip it upside down right now. Don't know if I can get it back up. <laughs> okay, so just making it center, kind of eyeballing it here. I'm not a measurements person. Um, you'll find that out. I don't know a lot of artists that are, but another matter. Okay, so make sure it's, it's pretty much on there. I'm just going to go a little bit at a time so I have lots of control and I'm watching what I'm doing. Uh, so as I said, it's a, it's a cream, so it dries a lot faster than paint. Um, I probably, and this one's very pigmented, so I think I only need to do it twice, and I don't really have to wait in between, so that'll be nice. And I'm not going for much of a, a full look. I do want it to look just as kind of distressed as uh, the rest of the piece. So I'm going to deliberately not fill it in all the way, make it a little transparent in places. More pigmented in some. Might not even go over it twice. Don't have to. It is moving around a lot though, so it might not be very clean. Hence the distressed look. You don't have to be very careful sometimes with this particular look. Anybody watching right now like to use these stencils? Or um, This is just from Walmart, and I think this one's from the dollar store. I just go there every time and see what's new. Um, you can get them anywhere now. Oops. Check in the comments. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. I use this stencil for absolutely everything. I love it. Light pressure. Um, not. Oops. See? That's what happens when you don't tape this thing properly. A little preview. What's going on? This would be a great stencil to use if you were um, tiling your backsplash or maybe even your floors. Oops, see I got some there. You can just paint right over metallic cream, no problem. So I'll just touch that up when I'm done. But this tile would be great, anything like it. The paint um, and our top coats are perfect for backsplashes and whatnot. I would love to use this in a tile one day. I've got some ugly linoleum in the bathroom. I wouldn't mind covering up, updating. 
lots of time now that I'm working from home. All right, so I think that's as much as I want it to be on there. This might be good, this might be bad, we'll see. You can paint over it if not. I like it. Um, I'm just going to go over those areas with Peachy Keen in like five seconds, maybe five minutes. Uh, I'm going to do the other side, but that's kind of what we're looking at right there. Very shiny. I think you can kind of see in the sunlight how it's doing its thing. I absolutely love the metallic creams. They're so fun. A little goes a long way, so I think we only have it in the small, but I haven't needed much else. You can even use it for um, very opaque finishes. Uh, going in with the sponge is a great uh, way if you want like a very metallic look with metallic cream. Just want simple stencils on either side. I don't think I'm going to go too crazy. Make sure this tape is really on here this time. Um, level it up. How far away did it go? Four fingers away from the top. Okay, that's how I measure. <laughs> that's pretty centered to me. I don't know about you. Yeah? Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to go in with it. Um, the sponge is already almost drying. If you're taking a break, I recommend just wrapping anything in a Ziploc bag or plastic just to keep it moist or be prepared to have multiple sponges. But just going to go with this now. A little lighter, not too much pressure. I'm going to try and keep it outside of the stencil from outside. I have to touch it up. Anybody um, watching ever use the metallic creams before? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, let me know what's your favorite one or what one you want to try if you haven't before. These creams are a great way to take um, just a boring piece to the next level. This isn't, I wouldn't call this a boring piece. Um, it's my mom's, it's not boring. It's wonderful mom, I love it. <laughs> um, but you know, like just a boring Ikea build, you can really dress it up with uh, creams, um, some waxes even. Then it's not just paint. Make sure you have control over your stencil. <laughs> Otherwise you might get a blotchy mess as the product works its way under the plastic. Just be careful. If you have those stick-on stencils, those are also really handy. Then you don't run into that trouble. But I was kind of a klutz about it and it still turned out great. So the uh, makeup pouncer definitely worked for this. So I'm just gonna put my stencils off to the side. Don't need them anymore. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So I did say I was going to fix up that side. And I think I want to wax this nail. Um, half hour in here, yeah. So just going to take my peachy keen and correct that little line that I've kind of made with the belt buckle. Real simple to just paint over it. This is great brush for touch-ups. And it's like it never happened. Um, just want to cover up some of that distressing. Okay, that is good with me. All right. So I've got two waxes that I want to use today. Um, I've got my brown antiquing wax and then uh, just a clear natural wax. Love this one. It's a great one to start out with if you're wanting to put a pigmented wax on for um, effect or depth. Uh, rarely do you just apply antiquing wax all over the place unless you're prepared to buff. 
Um, you can just put it on in the corners and everywhere you want to start and then buff, which is a great way. Um, but I also want the all over feel of wax and protection. Uh, so I'm just going to go in with my wax brush here, just very lightly into the wax bar. Oops. Just a little bit on the ends. And I'm just going to start with the drawer here because it's easiest. And I'll show you if I can. I'm uh, just going to lightly apply some. This just gets it on. You buff with a cloth later. But, you know, make sure you get a good even amount all around. You could just use a cloth for the whole application of wax, but uh, sometimes this is easier. Having a brush handy. It's a stiffer brush, so it's not going to bend on you. And I like to um, just let it sit for maybe a minute uh, before I... I wax right away sometimes. I don't see much of a difference in waiting. Um, it does let it sit for a little bit, but if you wait too long, then it tacks up on you and makes it harder to buff off. So just something to, to watch. Just going to start off with the easy flat surface. It is a firmer wax if you haven't used country sheet paint ones before. Uh, it's it's um, stiff in the jar. It's not a, a softer kind of like other ones with solvents in them. It is 100% natural. It's just a little beeswax and carnauba and a couple other things. Uh, I love it. Very natural. Not worried. Trying to get it evenly, and the metallic cream has already dried. It's it's very quick, so I'm not too worried about going over it with my wax brush. Just trying to get the wax on there. Can't really tell. It does darken up the color just a bit. Um, I find wax just kind of deepens the effect. And what the natural wax will do is, if I apply too much antiquing wax, which I'll do next, um, it does kind of act like a buffer, sort of like an eraser, so I can just work that wax off and try again. Um, it just helps it more control. So, apply it really well in those areas. I think I'll just show you uh, just the bottom for now, how this antiquing wax is going to work. Give you an example of the corner of this piece. So um, you're supposed to use a lint-free cloth when you buff your wax. Um, I find that the J cloths or Frank cloths from hardware stores work uh, really well. Just make sure that uh, lint isn't coming off. That's a good test. Uh, warm t-shirts that you've washed a couple of times are another great uh, thing to use to, to gently buff it on and make sure you don't embed lint into your surface. So just gonna, um, I do like to wrap it up in a painting sponge just because it makes it uh, nice and spongy, still lint free. And that helps it spread around quite nicely. And already I can see like a really nice shine to it. Maybe you can pick that up a little bit. And I worked it into the corners pretty good. So I'm just going to show you how the antiquing wax works um, after I've applied natural wax on this corner and this side. It's just spreading around really good. Do this right away. So there is um, a slight uh, visual difference here. Uh, this just looks a little bit darker and this just looks a bit more pastel. That is just the wax doing its thing. Um, it's going to have a little bit of a sheen to it compared to the matte paint. Fairly noticeable, it's still a very natural, old looking finish. Um, I've got my antiquing wax here, which is brown. This was our natural wax. I laid this down first, then I'm going to go in with this one. I like to use um, an old brush 
for these kind of applications, especially on oops, something with just a little detail and when I want to uh, work into the corners here. Uh, just going to go in with a small artist brush, pushing it into the wax here. I've already used these quite a bit so there isn't uh, much of a film to peel off. Some of the waxes can develop a skin. That's just uh, it oxidizing. It's not too much of a trouble. Just going to start off here. You can just use a second wax brush if you want to stipple it on, but so I'm just pressing it into the grooves, only working on one side. Um, I would wax the other side and then just apply antiquing wax again on the outside, kind of where I've been distressing. To give it that all over depth, it really helps to work it into the creases. That's kind of the trick with the all over look. Really work it into areas. So it's just a light pigment. It would be a little darker if I had just gone over the paint instead of a natural wax. I like it. Just gonna make it dark on the bottom here. Work it into there. One thing that I do want to pop out is this guy. I want this to definitely be darker and old looking. This is when the tiny brush helps for the tiny details. And then just use a cleaner part of that cloth and gently work it away. And it is just a bit darker than it used to be. I'll leave more behind on the outside so it has that illusion of depth here. You still want to buff off the wax, otherwise it will be tacky, but I have removed quite a bit, so it's already good. It's, and as you can see, it's much darker than the unfinished paint. Uh, the natural wax on this side has more depth than the unwaxed side here. So it's you can just change the look very subtly. Uh, that's, I'm saying that right, sorry. <laughs> you can change it just a little bit with a few products. Uh, I'm just gonna move this out of the way here. And just gonna take the edge of the cloth to show you. Just lightly bringing that back. It's a little darker on the bottom. I'm leaving behind wax in the crevices. I'm not working too hard to get them out of there. Just want it to have a nice gradient. Working in uh, circular sections, motions helps to make a rounder edge. Just a very subtle effect there. It just looks about 20 years older than that, and I love it. It's a very good look. So I'm just going to do this to the rest of the piece, uh, maybe just a bit here on this side. Give you the bigger view. Oh, and uh, don't forget, for watching, for sticking around, PG10, that's the code to use, 10% off the website, countrysheetpaint.com or .ca. Wrong end of the brush. It's a good start. Today is my Monday, it feels. <laughs> oh well. So just a little bit in the center, lots on the outside. I'm gonna buff that away really soon here. You can wash, uh, make sure you keep the wax brushes uh, 
clean, ready for the next application. You can use the uh, Country Chic Paint brush soap, same with any of the other brushes. Um, or if you're going to be using it on another project soon, just wrap it up in a Ziploc bag or in a plastic wrap. Works for a couple of days. Definitely getting it on the top where it would have gotten all the touching from hands and the cracks. Making sure that it's nice and dirty on the top too. Okay. Just gonna go in. You can just use the edge of a finger to really get into the areas that you need. Just lightly buff that away. Little circular motions is helping. And maybe you can pick that up. There's already a bit of a, oop, that's worse. <laughs> there we go. Don't forget the other sides. And again, I'm not trying too hard to wipe it out of the corners. I'm going to leave a little bit of that behind. It will uh, harden and cure over time. And will be nice and antique. So we have a couple of other waxes. We have a, a black wax, which also could be used for antiquing if you wanted a darker look with a, less of a warm tone. Um, there's gold wax for a nice shimmer, pearl wax for a pearl, uh, quite a few other options. You can combine them like I did with natural and antiquing, or just use one. So if, uh, if you find it has a bit of a went through a fire look, you might be applying too much tinted wax and it might be uh, best to just put down natural wax first so you have more control. Um, it's not a bad thing, but it's not everybody's look, so best to start slow and wait till you get the effect you want. So that's, oh, there we go. Maybe that's a little easier. So that's it there in a nutshell. Just a little bit of antiquing. It's very subtle. I don't want to go too crazy. Um, it would show up maybe better in camera, but it's just a very light antique effect. And I use a bit of the belt buckle for some shimmery bronze. I'm going to finish up the rest of this piece and then give it to my mother. She's going to be very excited, hopefully very happy. Um, just trying to put it all back together here. So that's that. Um, and again, I was using Peachy Keen. A beautiful apricot color peach color uh, don't forget to use peachy 10 if you happen to be checking out on the website this week it's a great code to use um, I hope everybody enjoyed this little project uh, stay tuned for another video I'll be going live to show you another one soon um, again I'm Mary from Country Chic Paint uh, just gonna go off live here and you guys have a great rest of your day bye